those who were never there for me When I was struggling, you was never there, homie My friends in the past never really cared for me I felt so cold, all alone, doing things on my own And this was every day, worked all night so mom wouldn't pay Crazy bills on the mind Made a tough day Feel even worse I had nobody To make the feelings reverse This life I'm living is search And that was the first Selling college Working part time To get my car fixed And put dents in my pockets Know what I'm trying to say is I depended on dudes for mad shit But they didn't come through for half of it So the fact is We all actors In this movie of life Welcome back to another episode of The Struggling Artist I'm here with my friend Director Producer, actor, writer, Donovan Warren. Hello. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. How you doing, dude? What's uh, what's 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 going on? You got this uh, you got this movie coming out right now. Little uh, you know, little life's work thing and coming out finally. Yeah. After all the years. Wheels. How long does this take you to make? So I think right now, total time from like writing to where I'm at, it's been uh, 16 years. For real, 16 years? Yeah, 16 years. Yeah. Now, physically, like when you got started, you were talking about just writing it, like you thought of the idea well, 16 so years ago. 16 years ago, thought of it, wrote the first draft. So I was like, it was like 20. Yeah. I was 20 when that happened. So I wrote the first draft, and then it took 10 years to kind of figure out, you know, what's going on and what the hell I'm doing and all this other stuff. And in between that 10 years, it wasn't just sitting around like, you know, at the end of 10 years, I finally got the, the break. Like, oh, it finally happened. There was like 10 years of like struggling, making shit, making other stuff, you know. Figuring out how it all works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, we could go down that road. Well, I, I mean, guess. yeah, no, like, yeah. Where, where are you from? Uh, originally New Mexico. Yeah. So I was born in Albuquerque, moved mm -hmm. to, uh, Oklahoma when I was eight, yeah, four years there, four years in Texas, a uh, couple years in Santa Barbara, and then I moved down to LA when I was 18. And I just, just hopped in a car and was like, fuck it? I was living in my car, actually. You so. were living in the car? Yeah, yeah. So, so you moved out I, here? I didn't have to hop in a car, I was in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, how long were you in the car when you moved out here? For a... I was in, so I was in the car, I had problems at home or whatever, and, and um, just moved out in the middle of the night. You know, I was just like, I'm done. I cleared up my room. Thought I was gonna stay with friends. That kind of got jammed up. So eventually, it slowly happened. I stayed in my car, finished high school. Here in LA? Uh, Santa Barbara. Okay. Or in Santa Barbara, like, just just a nightmare. Like, I'm driving my car, I'm living in my car, I'm working nights, going to high school during the day. And then um, my transmission went out, so I parked it by the school. Right. So I took auto body. Literally, the teacher would come out and, like, knock on my window and be like, hey, it's time to go to school. And I'd, like, go and brush my teeth and shop class and, like, Wow. You know, that kind of stuff. So I finished high school, moved down here with a couple buddies. Um, I tried to get into, try to get into USC for directing. Yeah. And I kind of just screwed off a little too much in high school. Plus I had, you know, other stuff going on, obviously. So I didn't get into USC and I was like, you know, I'll go to uh, Santa Monica City College. I'll try and do acting there, do directing there. See what happens with that. And maybe transfer to UCLA and stuff like that. What kind of jobs were you doing when you first moved out here just to stay afloat? Uh, anything. I've, I've had, I counted them up like a few years ago. I've had like 80 or 90 jobs since I've been here. I mean, just whatever. The, the first job I got was a uh, telemarketing company. Yeah. You know, so we would call people. It was kind of like, it was like this boiler room for like. Love boiler rooms. Yeah, I was raising money for pre-IPO stock in this this uh, venture company that was doing, uh, they were gonna do online streaming for science fiction movies, Okay. right? And this is, you know, this is back in the day. This is like year 2000 or whatever. So none of this stuff was like even possible right. back then, you know? Yeah, yeah. And there's like ahead of their time, but I think it was probably a scam or something like that, I don't know. Okay. So that was, that was my first job. Then I got a job at Macy's, like working in the clothing department. And then, I did the uh, Macy's thing too. I worked in Big Five. I worked at the post office. I worked, uh, I mean, I worked everywhere. And so, like, you moved out here with the intention, were you trying to escape from your situation or you moved out to LA <coughs> because you're like, I'm going to start acting. Like, this is what no, I want to no, do. No, no, no. I moved down here very, yeah, very much so to act, to uh, direct, to make movies, to be a part of movies. As an actor, what were you trying to do to stay productive as an actor? Like, well, so when I first started, when I first started acting, I mean, I didn't know what, 
what the hell I was doing. Like, also, like, I didn't know what acting really was. Mm -hmm. like, I'd done, like, theater productions and all this stuff. And, like, like I remember my thought process was I was watching, um, I was very much a fan of, like, Paul Thomas Anderson. I was watching Magnolia, and I was watching Tom Cruise, and he's in an interview situation kind of like this or whatever. And he had, like, these gestures and tics. And I thought, my perception of acting was, it was, like, um, completely con controlled and completely contrived right yeah so like every gesture was planned ahead of time and like mm -hmm. he was going to do this and almost like like a like a choreographed dance with acting right <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's what i thought it was <laughs> yeah. and i was like man this guy's good like he's on it look at this I, <laughs> it looks so real yeah. and all that stuff and obviously the more you train you realize that it's completely the fucking opposite of that and your body takes over and it's kind of just you know this journey yeah but um that was my perception right so when I first started acting, I was like, dude, I'm ready to do this. You know, I met with this girl who's a friend of a friend or whatever, and uh, we're reading lines and we're reading lines. And I'm like, I would say the lines and, and uh, it's just, it came out horrible. Like, you know, you like have it in your head and you're like, this yeah, is yeah. how I'm going to do it. Yeah, and then yeah. you actually say it. It was just like, I was like, this is not working the way I think it should. Right, right, I thought right. I was just going to walk out and be like, you know, good to go. So anyway, so I started taking acting classes, obviously. And, um, you know, I was like, De Niro's the best. So I took, uh, I took the method and then, um, took that for a while. And I was like, this is great. And then I was like, this is bullshit. So but I'm I, sure you, you kept some of that stuff you learned from. Yeah. Learning. I mean, I, I definitely think there's some good stuff there. And I think, I think it's, you know, overall a process. And I think you can pull different things from different things. Ultimately, you know, we can kind of what I've eventually ended up on, I think, is the best the best route for success. You know, I took uh, took Meisner and you get stuff for the repetition and all that stuff. Right. But really, I think the best success is um, doing scenes, doing scenes and just doing scenes. I don't believe in exercises. You know, the, the Meisner, you take Meisner, you study there for two years. It's a course. At the end of the two years, you've done maybe eight scenes. Right, right. You know, I mean, yeah. what the... F what are you going to do with that? Right. You know, I mean, I, it's a muscle. It's like going to the gym repetition. The more you do it. Yeah. I mean, I had this, you know, I had this old football coach when I was in high school and he was a very good coach. And unfortunately he didn't co coach my team. He coached like the freshman or something. But, um, his whole thing was scrimmage, right? Mm. He's like drills for 10 minutes and then scrimmage, 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 because you're going to learn so much from the actual process of going through it than you are with these drills. And a lot of these acting classes, you know, they want you to uh, meditate and imagine that you smell a cup of coffee and kind of all this other stuff. And it's, it's, uh, Why it's would artistic, you... it's out there, but I don't think it's, I think practicality, I think you're gonna get more from just, just going and doing scenes and doing different kinds of scenes and playing different characters, doing as much, you know, as you can as possible. While still, you know, working on it, doing the work for those scenes, so. Who, you mentioned Robert De Niro, but who are some of your inspirations um, as an actor or uh, or a, just a filmmaker? Because you are a filmmaker. You just did this movie. Yeah, I mean, um, when I was younger, I think Paul Thomas Anderson, Tom Cruise. Uh, you know, I know there's like this whole Scientology thing or whatever. I'm I'm a big fan of uh, you know his work and his body of work. Um, God, I mean De Niro, Pacino, of course, those older guys, Gene Hackman. I mean, I. No, I love them all. I think they're all great. Yeah, yeah. And so when you when you when you when you decided when you're like, all right, I'm gonna do wheels. We're gonna do this. Okay. What what was so, what was the first step you took to to getting it done or, or moving forward on it? Well, I think so. With within the ten years, right, was kind of the biggest thing, and or ultimately led me to sort of the life experience of like this is how it's actually done. Right. But um. Within that 10 years, so I wrote the script. I was like, let me make it with a friend. I bought a camera. I was like, let's shoot this, you know, all this stuff. And, and what I learned is I didn't know a damn thing about filmmaking. You know, I didn't know cameras. I didn't know sound. I didn't know editing. Like, I knew little things, but it was just my perception of what it was was completely different than the reality of everything. Yeah. So my first thing was, um, you know, but I didn't know this at the time. Yeah. You know, I thought, again, I think, um, you know, blind ambition blind ambition um i went to afm and i'm like i got this script and i walked into people's offices and i was like look i'm gonna make this movie that you should be a part of this and they're like no this movie's not gonna make money so i walked back out next year came back i've written this uh this 
this action movie. Yeah. It was kind of like Cliffhanger, but not as good, you know? It was, <laughs> it, was um, it was about, like, uh, you know, this guy that's like a, a Navy SEAL or, you know, whatever, some sort of Green Beret guy is up in the mountains, and these other guys kidnap the president's daughter to, like, you know, hold her for ransom and all this other crap, right? So I wrote this, this script, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make this. Like, I'm, I'm ready. So I went home, and I storyboarded every shot for the whole movie, right? right. Which is a lot of shots, plus it's an action movie and all that stuff. This so is a, like, this is, we're talking about a feature, or are we talking about a short film? This is a feature. This is okay. a feature. So it was like a phone book of, of storyboards. I mean, it was probably... You, you did the storyboards yourself. Yeah, and not like they're amazing storyboards, but just to mentally lay it out, get that process going. It was like, it was... 500, easily 500 pages of storyboards, right? Yeah. So did that, went back to AFM, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you know, I got this. And they're like, cool, great. You know, it looks like it would probably make money if you could get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, cool, I want to get it done. Give me the money, I'll make it. And they're like, no, it doesn't work that way. What have you shot? And I was like, oh, yeah. And at this point, I'd made like one just little thing, awful short film that yeah. I thought was amazing, right? Yeah. But um, so I go, okay, fine. So, so my goal was, uh, I go, all right, cool, I'll do that. So I somehow scraped together like 3,500 bucks. And I was like, let me make this, uh, this action short film, right? Where this guy's like tied up and he's got to knife fight these other guys and shoot all these other guys. <laughs> and so, and my brother's, uh, my brother and my family, they're like gun guys. So anyways, um, so we cast this thing on, and I'm watching this video, we cast it on like a Friday and we, we head out to New Mexico on like Saturday, right? And this is where I met Patrick, who's who's in Wheels. I met him on this. Oh wow! And his whole thing was, he goes, uh, he goes, he goes. You know what? I just want to see how the fuck you thought you were gonna do this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like that was his whole thing. Yeah. Because this script was so ridiculous. You know, I mean, I'm literally shooting a minigun at one point. You know, we got cars being shot up and all this stuff. So so we get out there and I'm like, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be amazing. And again, I don't know what what the hell I'm doing. Right. So um, we're in the garage. It's me, one of my friends. One of my other friends is DPing. There's one guy doing sound who's like also in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then it's me and my brother who hasn't slept in like two hours or whatever. Or two days or whatever, right? Because yeah. he'd driven out there. So we start shooting. We're behind schedule. And eventually people are just like, dude, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, this sucks. Right? Yeah. So there's shots in that where I'm like putting the camera on a tripod, hitting record, going back with the gun. You know what I mean? And like shooting out a window and then going like this and shooting out a window and then going back and hitting stop. Because there's no, you know, it's just me by myself. Right. right. And so the whole shooting was just, just a nightmare. We got these cars for a hundred dollars that ran because in New Mexico, you can get a car for a hundred bucks that barely runs. Drove it down a cliff. One of the cars we had to leave there. It was like all this. That's crazy. This drama. So right? you just, you threw a car down the cliff in this, in this little the trailer got stuck on the way up and it was a cliff on both sides and so we tried to go back and started a jackknife but the car couldn't go up because it was too heavy yeah so we had to just let the car go, go. we yeah. had to just let it go off the cliff right and my brother had to go get it the next day because the crew didn't want to come back and all this stuff so my brother didn't like me for uh you know a couple weeks after that that's insane yeah it was pretty crazy so, and then, you know, half of the, we're like, oh, we'll get all my minors, my, right. my cousin's minors, friends to show up and shoot all this stuff. And then nobody showed up and all this stuff. So anyways, my vision of what I wanted and what actually happened were two separate things, right? So I came back, I edited this thing. I made this really cool DVD and the, the DVD itself is cooler than the actual, what's the thing? You yeah. Know? Me and my buddies, every once in a while, we'll have a couple cocktails that we like put this in because it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke, man. Yeah, it's just a joke. Like yeah, at yeah. the end, like yeah. it's called scalpel. And like at the end, I take a scalpel and I like throw it, at, throw it at Patrick and like it hits him in the head. Like, I'm, I mean, it's just, it's completely retarded. But um, anyway, so we finished that. I go back and I'm like, cool, I got the short film. Let's make wheels. You know? yeah. Or let's make the action movie. And then I'll, after the action movie, I'll make wheels. The whole goal was to make wheels. Right. right? So I go back, you know, and I'm watching this and I just get no response because this short film is just not good. And also it's just, I mean, it's not good. I don't know. Right. Whatever. Right. Yeah. I still think it's the best thing on the planet. To this day? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew it wasn't good, but I, you know, whatever. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's, you know, screw them. I'm going to make my own, uh, my own action film. <laughs> so, so I turned this short film into this feature. Yeah called Nuclear, where this guy had, 
this this guy is going undercover right to basically get a case that has the the new codes right the new code case yeah right save the planet right <laughs> yeah so, so, so and there was this whole cgi sequence at the beginning where you know uh, my character's sister is in los angeles and los angeles blows up mm -hmm. right so we start so we go <laughs> it's not stupid i am so again, I still really don't know that much about production because I'd shot a short film, but it was just me and a couple friends or whatever, right? Yeah. So this time I'm like, I'm gonna do it right. So I get a, I get a real sound guy who, you know, real for the budget, right? You know, he was like some French guy and had drove like. He's a got camera. a boom. He's got a boom, right? And it'd been around for forever. So anyways, got him, got a, got a DP, and it was like, cool, let's do this. You know, I got another guy that was a producer who, who was just. Um, he 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 agitated some of the people on set. Sure, you know, let me just put it that way. So, anyways, we go back to New Mexico, and it's and I'm like, all right, cool. We got a week. You know, we got 80 pages to shoot. Let's do this. And um, Tim, who I ended up directing uh, uh, Wheels with, right, was the first AD, right. So he goes, uh, you know, he's like, 12 pages a day. He goes, that's that's pretty intense. You know, I've never really seen that happen, but you know, we'll give it a shot. Right. right. So of course we come back and. Um, we shoot footage actually looks really good. It, it came out pretty well. We had this kind of like 24 type feel. We had some great locations. You know, the acting was pretty good, all that stuff. Came back and we'd shot two and a half, three pages a day. So I was like, all right, cool. Whatever, we'll figure it out. Let's let's keep going. Like so we this thing kind of limped on for for about another six months, but the, the, the stuff that I'd written was so expensive to shoot complicated and locations and all this stuff I mean yeah. I was I was waiting tables and you know I don't right this, this was a this was a four million dollar movie you know any way you slice it you right know, between the CGI and actually shooting and all this stuff right plus 80 days of production plus so I mean we we shot a lot though we got some good footage and all that stuff and I was like all right let me see if I can use it and eventually got to the point I'm like what the hell am I doing wasting all this time shooting this uh, movie that's expensive when I should be making wheels right right so, yeah. I scra so I scrapped it so I scrapped it and then like a year goes by or a couple years go by and I'm trying to get wheels done and all this stuff eventually I hit 30 and I was just done I was like screw it I'm gonna make this movie no matter what I'm, right I don't care like, I'm gonna figure it out nothing's gonna stop me I'm gonna work it out paired up with Tim Tim was like I agree you know he, Tim goes Tim goes, I'm tired of watching these other people make these crappy movies because he first dated a lot of films. Right. He's like, let's make something quality. So we, we paired up, right? And what happened was um, we started meeting, started going. Every day we met, every day. And I was getting unemployment, you know, because I got fired from my job. Right. And, and he wasn't working and all this other stuff. So it was crazy. So a couple months go by, and next thing you know, we have a crew that we've assembled where people are working. We got a costume designer, we got a DP. We got sound guys, and we start assembling this this crew. You know, it's still still micro budget, but we have about twelve to fifteen people. We have a producer, we have this stuff, and again, we have no money. So, sold my car. He sold everything. I mean, it was just you guys whatever. sold everything. He he yeah. did too. He was he was down. Yeah, no, he was down. He was down. Eventually, it got to the point where he um, got a he left his apartment just to get the security deposit. Yeah, so he could shoot one of the scenes. Wow. Right, so he was like, "All right, cool. That'll get us an extra day." We had this uh, this whiteboard that we wrote everything up, and it was basically like, "All right, cool. You, what do you have?" And, and it was like, "Well, I got a car, I got a PlayStation, I got a TV, I got a this." And next to it, we would write how much we think we could get for it. Yeah. Right? And then it's like, "How much do you think you get from this uncle?" Blah 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 blah. And that was it. So we shot, we shot for sixty days, and roughly total, I don't even know how we got this much money, but we were like eight hundred to a thousand bucks a day for production. Which is pretty good. Well, which I mean, is unheard of. We had, right, crew, yeah, yeah. we had a crew size upwards of uh, at its biggest point, it got to fifty-seven people. What on a, on a day? On a day, who we were housing in San Diego on location. You shot in San Diego. Well, uh, north of San Diego. Okay. Let me rephrase that. In between here and San Diego. Okay. So we had this place called Magdalena Ranch, which um, one of our. Uh, Producers, right? One of our producers on the film had that location, and it had these two houses that were like five bedroom sort of trailer houses that right. they together. They were right across from each other. So when you watch the film, the uh, the hooker's apartment yeah. is the same as 
the dad that he goes home to. Right. That is the same as Elvis's uh, uh, place. Right. So it's all the same location. Looks completely different. We would take a door and we would put a bookcase there, or we would put a window where a bookcase is, or, or where a door is, just to make it look different. So, so anyways, our crew started assembling. We started shooting, and you know, it was. Uh, now you did some. You did some pretty crazy shit. Like you lost yeah. what fifty six pounds because there's it flashes forward in the film. Yeah, it was like fifty pounds. Fifty pounds. So. The whole origin of that was, because um, ideally you just shoot the whole thing straight through. And we would have done that if we had the money. Yeah. We didn't have the money, so our, our thing was like, uh, what the fuck do we do? So we told the crew we're going to shoot for two weeks, shoot the first part, and then we're going to take time off so I can lose the weight. Yeah. And we took the time off, really, because we didn't have money to shoot the whole thing. Right, right. So we are like, oh, we'll use that, and we can kind of use that as a real, you know. Right, to, to, get, to get some more money. To get some of the money and all that stuff. So we shot for the first two weeks. You know, it was stressful. I mean, the top I. Top search result for the first two weeks is the first six weeks of school. It's twenty four dollars and ninety one cents total, including tax. Would you like to buy it? No, Alexa, shut the fuck up. Sorry about that, Donovan. <laughs> We're in my bedroom right now. Um, no, I love it. Well, continue, please. Um. So, anyways, I, I, the the first block we got a. Uh, Kicked out of locations, yeah. cars got towed. I mean, it was just, it was just a nightmare. Like we had this, one of the producers had this pink RV. Yeah. And this pink RV was like a magnet for the cops and for everything. We're like, oh, this would be great. We can change in it, we can do all this stuff. And it ended up just being like this. The uh, worst idea. Yeah. Wait, so how, how'd you lose the weight? Like how, how, how did you lose the 50 degrees? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so we wrap that and then it's like time to lose weight. And, um, Basically, I committed to it, so I was like, no, I'm going to lose the weight. And essentially, what happened was I went down to no carbs, lost maybe the first 10, 15 pounds, and I was pretty ripped. Yeah. You know, I got down to like, so that's like 170 right there. Like, I'm shredded at 170, right? Yeah. Then you get to that point, and you just kind of stay there. And what happens is your body adapts, so you have to keep changing your diet. You have to keep changing your workouts. Problem is, once you get lower and lower, the more crazy the workouts have to get and the more insane the diet has to get. So I went down to that and then it was like, You're okay, done. cool, let me go cal caloric restriction, right? Let me go down to 700 calories a day to three hours of cardio a day, right? So I'm doing an hour of cardio in the morning, two hours of cardio at night, 700 calories a day. So I'm like, I'm kind of dropping weight, but it still went to that point and then eventually peaked at that point too, like 155, right? <laughs> at this point, at this point, there's veins in my stomach. Like, I can see the veins in my stomach. There's no body fat on my body. And at this point, I'm just trying to get rid of the muscle, which is the toughest thing. Like, losing fat is, is tough. Yeah. But losing muscle weight, like, once you get down to that point, it's almost impossible. So I did that, and then that plateaued. And then I went to an apple and can of tuna, like Christian Bale from The Machinist. I'm like, I'm gonna was that ins Was that inspired by Christian Bale? Yeah, well, I read it, yeah. But we also had, uh, one of Tim's uncles was a nutritionist, and he's like, listen, I don't advise it, don't do it. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, so you wanna give me advice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, all right, do it. You know, make sure you take certain supplements and all that stuff. So I started doing this, and um, of course, around this time, I got a trip to go home, yeah. right? So it got so bad that, you know, you wake up, you're thinking about food. You know, I was sleeping two hours a night. Like, I couldn't sleep. How long, how long were you doing an apple and a can of tuna? So I made it to eight days, but eight days isn't that much. It's, this is eight days after starving myself for four months, right? So that's why it was So tough. you're down to 155 and then... Then I started doing maybe 150 and then I started doing apple and can of tuna. From 190? 190, 192. And that's, yeah. you, that's where you're at right now? It's about where I'm at right now. Yeah. Wow. So, so I go home and I have these diet sodas and my cousin graduated high school or whatever. And I'm so out of my mind. I'm like, people are going to see these sodas. They're going to drink these sodas. It's a party. People are going to see these sodas. They're going to see my sodas. They're going to drink them. So I'm hiding sodas in the, in the seat cushions. I'm hiding, <laughs> you know, I'm hiding sodas in, in the bathroom behind the towels. And then I'm like, no, they're going to see them and all this stuff. And I was just... <laughs> I That's lost, crazy. Like I lost my mind. My brother, he goes, he goes, he goes, and my brother were always harassing each other. He goes, he goes, I didn't realize how bad it was until I saw you. He goes, I bought this turkey leg at the grocery store. I was going to fuck with you and eat it in front of you. He goes, 
but I feel bad now. And I was like, no, 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 no. Eat the turkey leg. Let me watch. You know, like, <laughs> it, was that, it was like out of my mind. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was fine. But at that point, when you're doing an apple and can of tuna, you're really sharing. It's like going a pound a day. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, cool, do this for a month. And I'm right there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat Christian. I'm going to get down past 117. I'm going to get to 116. That's where he got to? Yeah. So, so I get there and I'm like, cool, let's do this. So where are you at now? Weight wise. So, so I get back, I'm at like 145 ish. Yeah. Right. A couple days go by or whatever. Got a production meeting and, um, having a production meeting and I'm talking to the set designer. And like, I just don't care what he says. I'm thinking about pizza, you know, and I'm like, this isn't working. And eventually Tim lost his phone. Couldn't find it looking all over my place for a half hour. Right. I go, dude, this is stupid. Let me just call it on my cell phone. Right. Yeah. Pick up my cell phone, dial it. And my phone, his phone was in my pocket. Wow. I picked up my phone thinking it was his. Right. And at that point I was like, do I shoot a bad movie because the, the production really needed me there to produce. Right. Do I shoot a bad movie where I'm 116 and it's bad and, and you know, I feel good about what I did or do I just stop this madness and, you know, do what I did. So I stopped, I got down to like 143. I think eventually I probably went up a couple pounds, you know, when we filmed. Yeah. Just because of the stress. But even during filming, it was still, like I still had some of those crazy tendencies. Like I had a cabinet, I was eating like 38 whites a day. So I was on like a rabbit diet. Yeah. Rabbit, which um, is no carbs, no fat. It's just protein, right? Which is not good. So I hid my food, food on set. You know, I didn't want people to talk to me when I was eating, you know, but I'm trying to be normal. And right. And communicate this, effectively. And communicate and, get, and yeah. like, you know, everything's fine and all this stuff. And then who the fuck ate my egg whites? You know, right. flip out or whatever. So it just brings back memories. The, the weight loss, the only real problem I think with the weight loss that I ran into was when we did the water stuff. Yeah. Because I wasn't taking any calories in. My body didn't have any fat. So it couldn't heat itself up. Yeah. So I started going to hypothermia when we were in the ocean. So I'm good. I'm like, I surfed, I'm a swimmer, all this stuff. I was, it was bad. Like I would just jump in the water and just start screaming. And right. Like just yelling in the tweet takes. It was so painful. Like my body, for whatever reason, was going into shock. What time, what time of the year are you guys shooting in the water? It wasn't even that bad. I, I, I don't even think it was wintertime or anything like wow. that. Wow. It was just, for whatever reason, it was just, did it. But, um, so anyways, we wrapped up that block and we're like, cool. We got a majority of the film. That block went way better, shot a ton of stuff. And then we wrapped, uh, took a break for like three or four weeks. Uh -huh. And then luckily got money at the last minute again. Like it literally was the point where we go, we go, if we don't have money by Sunday night at 10 PM, we got to tell the crew that we're not shooting on Monday. Right. Right. So Sunday at 6 PM, you know, the deep, DPs, like we had a, a different DP for that block. She's like, hey, don't worry. You know, I took off work. You know, I'll be there tomorrow. I, I took off work, blah, blah, blah. Like all these other people are playing around this. And we're just like, it's. I don't have my money. Four hours. And we got to call people and tell them. And of course, we got it at like 9 o'clock, like 9 p.m. at night. So. How much, of the, how much of the movie did you steal location wise? All of it. Everything. All of it. I mean, there's interiors where it's like people we know and stuff like that, but it's. Right. Like the, the the shooting in the water or Santa Monica, shooting all those places. You, we had we had a we had a still a, a still photo permit. Oh yes 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 yeah yes. So we were shooting stills really fast. Right right and. <laughs> 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 but I mean, is that the luxury? I mean, you are using five Ds to make this movie. That's probably you can get away with something like that. You're it a, it helps. Um, for me personally, I think I. I take more responsibility than the crew does. You mm. know what I mean? Like if you go to set and you're not the producer and they're doing something stupid and the cops come or whatever, you know, it's not me, it's the producer or whatever. Right. When you're the producer and something stupid is happening, I, I just felt like there was a lot of things I got nervous for. You know, we rolled guys down the stairs. We went to downtown LA and blocked off a street, had a guy get hit by a car. We had a 70 foot crane. No permits. No permits. And we got a PA out there with, with the with the orange vest and I'm you know and, and but and it he's looks a PA and you know, it he looks doesn't know what he's doing yeah it looks completely legit anybody that drives by there, oh they're shooting a movie yeah we got cones and stuff but I mean the whole time I'm just like this you know what yeah I mean? yeah that's crazy we go out in the thing I jump off the pier you know people are fishing out there I'm like you guys you know I'm swimming back from jumping off the pier there was there that's was right you throw yourself off the fucking pier 
Yeah, I mean, there was so much really stuff that we did that was so exciting and so crazy and fun. But for me, it's like, that's just my experience. You know, I haven't shot that much other stuff with other people. Yeah. My experience of being on set is just a panic attack, a nervous wreck from, you know, the, the moment we get there. I mean, we, we set each other on fire downtown where the, where the bid district, the bid patrol rolls sure, around. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So, I mean, I can't even go into how we Let got me ask you, would that. you would you do it all over again? I don't think I could do it all over again. Knowing what I know now, knowing how long the journey was, how tough the journey was, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it again. Yeah. Not the same way. Plus, you know, I want to do something new and all that stuff. But... Rescue 911. Look, I'm going to slit my wrists. So can you be here in uh, approximately 30 minutes? Sir, I don't know what's yeah. going on, but... <laughs> I always wondered what death was like. I remember being truly happy. I had finally realized that I needed help. You really want me to kill you? You help me out? Here we go. Do you want to pray or something? No. Ding, ding, ding! Nikki's the big winner! And what does he want? <laughs> I know this great place with these prostitutes. I'm gonna tell you something that they don't tell you in the storybooks. Some people are born to do great things. Everyone else. No matter how hard they try, the world will not let them ever, ever have their dream. Fuck you! You only have one choice, Nick. The choice to die. No, no. Come on, let me without you, brother. Let me without you, brother. Come on. Look, at first it was about money, but things changed. You used to have such a light about you. What what is your um what is what keeps you going? I mean, why why did what is your why? Have you established a strong why as to why you're doing this as an actor? For me, I just I love uh, I love movies. I love making movies. I love I just love movies. I mean, that's really that's my why. It's like I feel like it's just the art form. It's tough for me to explain. Yeah, but I can feel something watching a movie that, that I wouldn't normally feel in my personal life, and sort of that journey and that road. It's just. I feel like it's who I am. It's part of my destiny. It's what I'm here to do. It's, it's, uh, you know, I don't think there's a clean cut answer for me. It's just what I'm passionate about. Right. You know, it's just kind what of, I enjoy. Yeah, you enjoy doing it. It keeps you yeah. going. Uh, what, what advice would you give to somebody just starting out right now? Like, just somebody that's like, hey, I'm going to make a movie. Hey, I'm going to make a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, it's tough. I mean, if I was talking to myself at 20, I don't know if I would give myself advice. The, the real advice, like here's how you cut corners and here's, here's, you know, don't go down that road because that road's a long road. Right. You know, here's a shorter route. Like, I don't know if I would go back and do that because those experiences are so beneficial and you kind of have to just learn them and you have to be there, you know, in the trenches day in, day out to kind of grow from those experiences. As far as like advice, you know, I mean, don't, you know, give up if you can and if you can't, and you have to do this. I would say take blind leaps. You know that's what's worked for me. Yeah. You know I would say because I have a lot of friends that maybe could be super talented, uh, willing to do stuff and all that stuff, but they have the negative talk that kind of says, uh, "Don't do this. It's not going to work out well," or whatever. For me personally, whatever reason, you know, I jump into things and think they're going to be the most amazing thing on the planet. Right. Even if they're not, but I get a lot from that. You know, even if it goes really down a dark, you know, just a bad experience or whatever, like that short film I made that's not that good, 
there's still so much of a learning curve I got from that that right. I wouldn't have got from waiting to do it the right way to do it with this guy and waiting and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I would just say, uh, I would say always shoot stuff and just go for stuff, write stuff and do it. You know, don't wait around. Because if, if, you don't, if I follow my path, I wrote this movie, I did all these other things trying to get this made and eventually I just did it myself. Right. You know what I mean? Not, mm -hmm. not by myself, but with other people. But waiting on money, waiting on, you know, the weather to change or whatever, whatever, whatever the excuse is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think it's best to just, just put, the, put the train in motion and just start building speed. Yeah. I had a, I had a guest um, a couple of episodes back. He's like, he said the same thing. It's, like, it's all about creative momentum. It's like, if you yeah. start something, you're just going to keep on feeding that machine and eventually you'll have momentum and it'll, you'll see it through, but you have to start. There's a big, there's a big Tony Robbins thing that I, that I kind of look at, uh, keep thinking about, right? And I'm going to oversimplify it, right? okay. but it's, it's basically, um, all you have to do is say that whatever you're going to decide to do, you're going to do no matter what, right? Yeah. So basically you're going to say, if I make a decision, I'm going to make it happen. Right. You're going to commit to that. Then all you have to do is decide what you want to do, right? Yeah. So if you're going to say, I'm going to do this, no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to figure it out. Then all you have to do is decide to do that. And then it's nothing's going to stop you. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, they, you know, they, they decide to do something, but then they don't commit. Right. You know? I, I, I think I, I met you um, when you just started your entre entrepreneurial endeavor, which is uh, Isobrain. Which is ISO brain. And um, I love it. Oh, I like, I like the plug. It's really nice. good. Yeah. You guys should get it. It's great. Isobrain.com. Yeah, that's cool. right. What's this about? What is, what, why, why, why this? What, why'd you start this? <laughs> I know, right? It's such a crazy thing. Like off the wall. Well, well first of all, what is it? Okay, so it's, it's, um, it's a nootropic, right? It's a, it's a brain supplement to help you focus, you know, be more cognitive have better memory, you know, it's like vitamins for your brain, essentially. Right. Yeah. So I started it because I'm very uh, big believer of that world, right? Like I, if, if, I'll sort of simplify this. If you were a bodybuilder, you would take all the supplements to help you get bigger muscles, right? Yeah. There's stuff out there, basics, you would take whey protein, you would take creatine, and it actually would help make you stronger, right? right? So if you use your brain for things which I do all day long, like obviously to solve problems, figure things out for business, like I'm constantly on the go, why would I not do the same thing for my brain? So I started going into this world and there is this whole world of uh, nootropics and different supplements, vitamins and different uh, ingredients and all of this stuff. And um, did some research, talked to a bunch of people and, uh, and then that's it. And you just you just launched it. You this is a complete DIY effort on your part as well, right? I mean, it this is. is well, that's that's yeah, that's my company, etc. Yeah, so it's amazing. It came out really. I mean, people have actually really loved the product. It's uh, it's been doing really well. And like, what have you learned as an entrepreneur? I mean, is it is it super hard? Is it super hard to start a, a company like this and create a product and get it out there and market it? Like, yeah, is it it's impossible. Yeah, that stuff. <laughs> is that the sh that's the short of it it's really difficult i mean it's, like um yeah i mean the, the the other reason i started it up was because i wanted sort of like a passive income i was like oh i could do this passively but the thing is there is no real passive if you're involved you know you can't have somebody run a successful business and do something else so something that i was passionate about but also i was planning on starting it up so i could you know, have this business on the side to sort of supplement the, the film stuff. Yeah. You know, if it's in hiatus or whatever. And so do you, would you call this a failed attempt at, at, at um, no. entrepreneurship? Not at all, right? No, not at all. It's out there. It's not still available. Like yeah, you it's can, still out there. We're in which is, you're saying the sales are not necessarily where you want it to be right now. Well, I, I thought I was going to be making millions of dollars. Again, me, you know, going into things blindly, stupidly, you know, right. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to be rich. Yeah. You know, with this, but um, no, it's, I mean, it, it does really well. It does really well. We're in a second uh, formulation. We're going to reformulate it. Okay. Going to come out with a, a two pill form. This is four pills a day, which right. some people just find is too much. Right. So we're going to come back and do two pills a day. 
take some of the stuff out, put some good stuff in, better stuff. And uh, it's kind of where we're at. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you're you're learning still with this. Yes. Yeah. It's going to grow. And keep I'm, I think it's growing. so impressive that you're willing to just blindly <laughs> throw shit at the wall and be like, fuck it. This is what we're going to do right now. This is where I'm at. I'm going to. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know a lot about that stuff, too. It's not it's not completely blindly, but I think I think for me, I had different expectations for where the business was going to go. Right. Like I thought I was going to spend money on Google AdWords and that was going to be the main source of my income from that. Yeah. But actually it ended up being Amazon, which a huge, I mean all my sales, I actually switched over 100% to Amazon. Really? After that. The Google Google AdWords are um, expensive and the, the cost breakdown just wasn't, wasn't effective for me. It just didn't make sense. So Amazon is the way to go right now. Is what you're for saying. me and for that business, that's that's what I found. And what about in, in terms of selling a movie, how like in, in distributing this film, like? So my my company, Loaded Dice Films, did that as well. Right. We went through an aggregate through the uh, for the digital, you know, for digital rentals and digital downloads. Okay. And then the DVD is uh, direct directly from us, and, and Blu-ray, yeah. And all the packaging you did yourself. <coughs> um, all Correct. the Correct. I made. I actually did make the covers for that. Yeah. It's just really, really yeah. impressive. In 20 years, I gotta, I would love to ask all my guests this question. In 20 years, what do you want your body of work to say about you? You know, I don't think, um, I don't think the body of work saying something about me is something I'm interested in. Hmm. I'm more interested in having a, a solid body of work in films that I believe in. You know, for me, it's not about. It's not about the character or the the role or whatever. It's it's about the movie. It's about know? the story. It's about the story. It's about the movie. You know, I could care less if the guy's bland or if the guy puts on makeup and dances around and laughs or whatever. For me, it's just more important about the story. So if in 20 years, if I could have a bunch of great films, you know, working with other directors and working with different actors and just working on different stuff from different genres and making great movies. Yeah. That's that that's it for me. That's the goal. That's where I want to be. Do you ever consider quitting? I do, I do. Um, and then I realized that there is nothing else I would want to do. Because you know, if there was, I would have done it a long time ago. That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, I thought about like, you know, let me, uh, let me, you know, go live on a beach somewhere and do whatever. And I just know that after a week or two weeks, it would just wouldn't work. I would just freak out. I would just freak out. You know, I mean, I could have, I could do whatever I want. If I want to be a stockbroker, I would have been a stockbroker. If I want to make money, I could have went to real estate, could have just done the entrepreneurial stuff. You know, if I want to be president, I'd be going down that road. It's for me, it's 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 not a question of uh, possibilities, it's just what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So for me, this is what I want to do, and there's nothing else I would want to do. You know, and everything else I try and do is more for fun, you know, to play around with, have some fun with, yeah, a distraction, but you know. Because that's, for me, it's just, that's what I'm passionate about. And the passion is where it's at. What, what has your time in the entertainment industry taught you up until this point? Like specifically as a filmmaker or as an actor or storyteller? I think for me, it's, um, for me, and this is kind of my philosophy before, I've never been good with uh, letting other people decide for me. Yeah. You know, which is why I dropped agents and I don't really have an agent and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, um, Waiting for someone else to do something for me does not work for me. Yeah. You know, doesn't mean I don't want to work with other people. Doesn't mean I can't work with other people and all that stuff. If there's a job I'm interested in, I'll figure out a way. Like, I don't need somebody to set something up for me. Like, I'll figure something out. Right. How to get in there or whatever. But um, for me, what it's taught me is just ignore the rules because the rules are BS. They're set up to be broken. To be broken. You know, and uh, and go for it. You know, take chances, get in there, and don't worry about what people think. Cause and and, it and as anyway. and as an actor, you're not really concerned with the the business side of acting. You're more concerned of like just getting telling the stories you want to tell. Correct. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's not about money. Like, I'm not worried about a paycheck. Like, for me, if somebody was like, "Hey, here's a million dollars for a movie you're going to be in," which is not good, or here's you know zero dollars, we're going to take everything you have. But it's going to be phenomenal. Going to be amazing. It's 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 a no brainer for me. Yeah, you take the you take the no money. Yeah, yeah. that's really amazing. Um, where are you on social media? So I I mean I am, but um, check out Wheels the movie. 
Wheelsthemovie.com? Wheelsthemovie.com. What about um, on IG, Instagram, I mean Instagram, uh, so, Facebook? So, so Wheels the Movie across all of them. Okay. All right, so Instagram, Wheels the Movie. And if you uh, search on Amazon, you could search Wheels and then uh, Donovan Warren and the movie will come up. Or Patrick Hume or whoever's in it. <laughs> I know, it's not to me like it's... I mean, it's... You know. I, 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 when, when I saw it, you know, when I initially saw it, I thought... There's, I can't, I can't believe what you made it for. You yeah. know, are we allowed to say what you made it for? Do you want to say that? Yeah, I mean, it's basically the, the price of a luxury car. Yeah. And not a Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, like when I say luxury, I'm talking like maybe like like a Lexus. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Like a nice Lexus. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful film. Like I was moved. Um, I wish you lots of success, Donovan. I mean, um, thank you. Really with it, it's it's great with Isobring with everything you're doing creatively yeah, and. Absolutely. Entrepreneurially. Thank you for coming over. That cup. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. That cup is for you to keep. That's yours. Oh, I'm keeping it. Yeah. Um, keeping it. Thanks again. I appreciate you so much. I'm rooting for you. And uh, guys, wheelsthemovie.com. Buy it or rent it. Stream it. What is it, like $2.99 on Amazon or something like that? So yeah. to just rent it for 24 hours. Do it. Support independent filmmaking. That's what this show is all about. But thanks also for watching. The bonus features. Oh yeah, way. this yeah. If you buy this, it's got the, it's got like what two hours of bonus features, right? Yes. Yeah, I still haven't gotten to that, but I mean, I I did buy my own copy. This this is what this show is all about. It's all about supporting independent artists that you do not know. Subscribe to my show. Follow Donovan Warren. Follow Wheels and Movie. Thanks for watching. And you and you. They say that time is everything. And me, I'm just not for the center stage. And don't give a damn how a hater say. When I'm at a level they'll never reach. They witness me struggle and sacrifice. And still turn a blind out of what they see. But I kept that faith in my God above. Cause I know that he can see everything.